So nice and light to start with if you haven't. Work out where you need to be, adjust your body position, move closer to take the slack off, slide back a little bit further, or if you're on the stairs with the cords mounted vertically as so, like so, then maybe you can move up and down the stairwell as that will obviously make things a bit easier as well. Whichever way you've got them doesn't matter, but just keep it light to start with. Here we go. Okay, the beauty of having the cords mounted vertically can actually engage the upper body rotation, which is oh so critical. We'll do a lot of stretch cords, swim bench. Um, you, often we overlook this. So even if I was on my swim bench for a good period of time, I would break up the block of work with some frequent intervals so that I could get off and actually do some very simple carry on. Just gonna do a little demonstration. Work on a little bit of trunk rotation. And just remind myself that the hips follow, the shoulders are working, driving through towards the chin. The head is absolutely still. And this movement's fantastic anyway because you've got to break that connection on dry land so often the head is part of the trunk as we move forwards in one direction swimming is one of those odd sports uh can't think of too many but actually the head stays still and the body rotates and that's what gives you that length but you can't have the head moving unless of course you're turning to breathe or lifting to sight so let's carry on coming up on two minutes on round one two minutes on round one Two, two minutes done of the four. We're going to switch to some single arm. If you were with us in the spring, early summer, the single arm drill is absolutely my go-to drill. Fantastic block of work for you know, value for money, time efficiency. It works so much of the stroke. It literally is the stroke just without one arm moving. It couldn't be more simple than that. Unfortunately, it is very technical to execute and you will need some practice. So we're gonna move on to that shortly. We're gonna do a minute with the left arm, a minute with the right arm. If you've got some dumbbells, it'll help just with your thinking about applying some pressure to the water. If you haven't got anything like that, don't panic. It will still be good to perform the movement without any weight under the hand. So nicely getting warmed up now, coming up on three minutes, head nice and still. Shoulders are reaching towards the chin to give me the length of stroke. The hips are following. I'm pulling central down the center line, pretty much under the body. We don't deviate wide, we don't sweep across. Those ideas went out in the 70s. It's good science, but it just got a little bit exaggerated with time and the S pull is not helpful. Keep it predominantly straight. If you want to work on something a little more technical, there is a subtle slither. Don't make it an S. Don't go wide of the shoulder and across to the hip. It's more of a slither. And that way you'll keep the pressure go, driving the water backwards and you moving forwards rather than shifting the hips from side to side as you react to the wide sweeps. Okay, in 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, good, good. Let's jump off the cords if you've got a dumbbell. So stretched out, this hand stays in the pocket, does not move, pivot with the elbow, make that connection, pull the shoulder through towards the chin, here you've now got the body rotated so that recovery will be easier and drive it forwards back into that Superman flying position. The extension position stretched out nicely towards the front. So remember, this shoulder starts high, finishes low towards the chin, recovers back to high. Pivot, so we're pulling with the palm and the forearm, driving, making that connection coupling the body so that that shoulder does drive through towards the chin and then use the kick the leg kick the hips engage to help you with your recovery last 10 seconds off with whichever arm you chose to start with doesn't matter we're going to do both pulling with the forearm make the connection drive it through make sure you're onto your side 
and switch sides. Good, good. So fingertips to elbow. There's that pivot. I'm trying to create that forearm alignment before it reaches the eyes. And then I make that coupling effect through the body, driving the shoulder back up above the surface as the kick really engages. This is why this drill is so difficult. Not many, most drills isolate one body part. They restrict a bad habit. They emphasize a good habit. But this one, you need your catch to create the handle to help you pull. You need the stability to keep that rolling through as both arms are now down towards the hips. And then that strong kick to help you elevate, recover, and drive the shoulder back. One more. And we'll talk about breathing on that next one. Back on the course, please. So back on the course. Here we go. Three minutes this time. You know I have a, a fondness for patterns and pyramid sessions, ladders, call them what you will, but obviously we go up. Usually we're going to start with the four and then the two single minutes. We're now on a three. We'll go the two single minutes, we'll go a two, a full stroke, and then the two single minutes, and we'll finish with a one. And we're gonna go two rounds of that, just to build it up to about 35 minutes, because you want that heart rate elevated, although today's a bit more technical focus, not the end of the world, but 35 will be a good block of work. There's Junior just going down for his nap. You might be able to hear him in the background. Good night, little and sleep well. Thank you to grandma for putting him down. So maybe we can add a little bit of extra. If you feel where the shoulders are warmed up, feel like you've got some blood flowing to those swimming muscles, maybe take a step back, put a little extra emphasis through, drop down a step, work it a little bit harder. Your choice. If you're comfortable where you are, just stay here. Focus on your technique. Good, good technical block of work today. So remember the drills. We just worked on the hips and the shoulders, switching from side to side, the recovery. Clearly the pull is important as we create that, open up that blade, fingertips to elbow. So think about how that movement of the drill should now help shape. This is something we forget in the water. We do our drill, we switch off, get it done, go back to our full stroke. But you've really, to make it work well, to make them worthwhile, you've really got to focus on all that the drill emphasizes and have it flow into the full stroke. Last 35 seconds, which is why I'm a big fan of just performing maybe 10 meters of a drill Use the velocity of the push-off to give you that little bit of speed. So you don't always need fins. Use that elevated body position. Nice, sit nice and high in the water from the streamline push and glide. And just go 10 meters of drill. And then have it flow into the full stroke, shape the full stroke for the rest of the length. Last 10. Three, two, one, good stuff. Pick up your dumbbell if you've got one. Don't panic if you haven't, not the end of the world. So if you've got a lighter dumbbell or a heavier, you can make some adjustments and give yourself a little bit of a different emphasis. I'm gonna stick with the same one for now. Nice and slow. The breathing. When you do this drill in the water, I think it's performed better if you just pause in that Superman kicking position, that extension position, and take the breath to the side. And if you're struggling, remember often it's to do with that shoulder collapsing, not being clear and blocks the way. So it'll help you get to the side, get the breath in, which is why this drill is a good one to do with our snorkel. Many drills are useful or, or can be performed a little bit more accurately with a snorkel. This one, better without. You, the temptation would be to breathe under this arm, 
Okay, try to resist that because then you've got sort of both arms in the rear quadrant and it's going to be a little bit unstable. Let's swap over. So use the leg kick, use the hips to drive the shoulder back up. If we're in the water, when everything's stopped moving, then I take that breath away from the arm I'm pulling with. Don't have to breathe every single stroke. Some people find that a little bit too much. Equally, if I need it to help calm and relaxing, I can take one breath, two breaths between each arm cycle and then pull through. Both perfectly fine. Definitely start to use, um, we'll start out with fins on this one. It's really tricky, really tricky. Fins will just give you that little bit of an artificial boost so you can just get the body position improved. Ready? Last one. Back on the court. Here we go. Down to two minutes. Down to two minutes. If you can, a little bit of extra. Oomph. Maybe speed up if you want to. Work on your rhythm, work on your stroke count. If you want to keep it slow and strength building, slow it down, no problem. Both are good today. We're really just focusing on the drill movement, learning that as a great skill to have. Pools are opening here today in the UK. If you can get in the water, this is a great drill to just very quickly bring your technical point, pointers back into play. Okay, one minute to go, one minute to go. Finish strong, reach for the knees, don't get lazy. Finish at the hips, go beyond, remember. With the rotation, you should be able to hit that stroke a little bit longer. Last 30 seconds. Last 20. Shoulders are feeling it, you don't have to use the dumbbells for the drill. Just work on your accuracy. Fine, even if it's just a half a kilo, just a little bit of weight in the hand will just help you think to yourself, yep, yeah, got the water pressure under the hand, I'm holding my water and I'm pulling myself forward. It might just help bridge that little link while we're not actually in the water. Good, everyone. Pick up the dumbbells or try one without, try one without. Without any weight, you're going to have to really focus on your technique, slow it down. Don't let it just become, you know, like a flat across the body. This axis, no rotation and just a swing. And you literally, this drill can become that with a snorkel on. But if you do turn to breathe, it can just slow things down. It can remind you to get that shoulder back up above the surface. Take that breath away from the arm you're pulling with. Nice and slow, set the pull position, catch the water, and then accelerate it. Remember, the first part of the stroke is nice and steady as you set and hold and then drive it through. One more, please. And into the other arm, please. Set the water, set the catch, hold the water, drive the body through, and recover. Elbow pivots wide, elbow points to the side of the pool, fingertips point to the bottom of the pool. Rotate, drive the shoulder back up above the surface. Last 30 seconds. We will do the one, one and one to wrap it up. We'll have a little breather and then we'll go for a second set, second set. I might just show you another variation of this single arm drill. Again, it's another way to remind you 
to finish your rotation. Often we see people pull the shoulder through, that's really done really well, and then just get a little bit lazy on the recovery and come back to a flat position without getting fully into streamline again. Are we ready? Back on the court, here we go. Just a minute, we can pick up the pace now a little bit. Remember the switching through the upper body that the drill delivers, <clears throat> head nice and still, but if you want to add some breathing, of course. I'm gonna go with my usual two to the left, two to the right. Think about that earlier turn as you follow the hand under the body. You wanna get the head back to neutral a little bit quicker. Don't get stuck out of position here and then sort of swing the head back into position uh, with the momentum of the arm recovery, dragging you across the center line. Last few seconds. Good, good, good. Here we go. Pick up the dumbbells for the last time. <clears throat> Slow through the catch phase, drive out to the back of the stroke. Slow, set it up, accelerate it through the back. Shoulder starts high, finishes low. The kick helps you recover through that recovery phase. Good work, here we go. 30 seconds to go, 30 seconds. So we'll, there's a sort of a second part to this drill. Once we've sort of finished in this extension position, to check the shoulders elevated, we could put a little shark fin in. And from the side, that would just literally look like the elbow travels high, brings the fingertips down, and then I would go again with that single arm drill. Shark fin comes up. If the shoulder has collapsed and not finished fully, swap arms, please, swimmers, swap arms. Okay, if I don't get this shoulder, I'm gonna to struggle to get my shark fin clear. I must get to this position so I can come up. And come down and this goes for whether you're a sort of a, a straight arm finger led recovery or a high elbow you know fingertips dragging style of recovery both will work we can play with those on the next round if you work on that adding that little sort of insurance policy into the rhythm into the routine then you could put your snorkel back on for this and be confident that you are getting the, sh the shifting from side to side to side. Good, everyone, last 10 seconds. Nicely done, last one. Fantastic, okay, take a breather, have a drink. I'm just gonna reset things here. It won't take too long because it's a, an 18 minute block of work and we do want to get two rounds done before Zoom kicks us off. Okay, so teaching points to think about into the full stroke now. Fingertips to elbow, okay. As you extend and finish the stroke, there's that pivot point you're trying to be, if you are standing, if you're vertical, then obviously this is horizontal. If I'm laying the cords out, the body is horizontal, I want this to shift to vertical pretty quickly. Are we good? Four minutes, here we go. Can we take a step back? Can we put a little bit of extra resistance on the cords? I would like to, but the, uh, the pulley system is grinding away and making a bit of a racket. And with Junior asleep, I dare to push my luck. <laughs> here we go. I'm just gonna bend my knees a little bit, just to put an extra bit of tension on. The shoulders are saying, that's fine, that's enough, don't worry, stay exactly where you are. I think there's enough to think about without turning the head to breathe, but sometimes without that breathing, just feels a little bit unnatural. So it's up to you, on these full strokes, I'd be happier if you were concentrating fully on, on what the drill puts into the full stroke, Working on a nice central pull, elbows popping out wide. Close your eyes maybe for a few strokes. Visualize you're in that lovely empty 50 meter pool. You're on top of the black line, nobody around you. 
each armful is driving the water directly backwards. The body is beautifully streamlined. So you are moving forwards, nice and relaxed, nice and easy. Everyone remember, we are trying to finish this session with a little bit of stubble rash on our shoulders. For those that, 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 that have that condition, if you watch a good men's elite team train for a few hours, you definitely see those red marks on the shoulders. Where they'll just be repeating thousands and thousands of repetitions. The entry coming through, brushing past, driving back, recovery. With the, uh, with the way I've got my cords, I can sort of go with a little bit of a light vertical um, recovery above the surface of the water, but I don't like to. Let's just focus on the underwater phase, keeping the hands at 180 to each other. I know there's different rhythms, I know there's different phases to the arm pull and most people will sort of slow things down and have like a little bit of a, a rhythm, a catch up rhythm. What you don't want to do is alternating single arms, that's a very slow clumsy stroke. You know, too much catch up, it's a good drill but it's not your full stroke but obviously for now keep the hands at 180, keep the tension on the cords. I think that's going to work best. Last minute, last minute of this block. And then we've got our two by one single arms. If you want to throw in that little sharp thing, it's up to you. You don't have to. It's really bizarre that a few months ago. We were working these stretch cord sessions and lockdown ended and we were traveling out to our nice lake. And now lockdown's ending. This time it's freezing outside, so there's not many going to the lake. But at least we do have some pools open. The worrying statistic that quite a few pools still aren't reopening, over 200 for various reasons, you know, staff, financial probably have not been able to reopen. That's very sad. Okay, in five, four, three, two, one. Pick up your dumbbell. Okay, so let's go a single. Recover back out in front and then put our sharp fit into position just to remind ourselves to make sure this shoulder finishes the drill high. If you just get to here, there's a lot of me submerged. I'm not as streamlined as I might be, and I'll soon know about it because this recovery becomes very labored. I just get caught, I get stuck. So single arm, finish with that shoulder popping back up above the surface, and then I just slide those fingertips up along the side of the body. It's over-exaggerated. We wouldn't swim sort of that close. It's not a, you know, finger trail is another drill to sort of help your recovery. But you don't want to be swimming that close in. Fantastic. And let's swap sides. So single arm drill, pivot early, drive through, shoulder finishes low, shoulder finishes high, sharp fin recovery in between to check this shoulder got to where it should. And pull through. So you could go with a snorkel because you are getting a little reminder as to what this shoulder should be doing. If you need to breathe, obviously you could put a breath in here, in front of the shark fin, one behind the shark fin, and then give your full attention to the single arm pull again. Back to extension, breath, shark fin, breath, and single arm. Good work, shark fin, Single arm. I've gone with a slightly heavier dumbbell now just to really help me slow things down. Put two sharp fins in, it's up to you. What we want to avoid 
Is it just becoming, you know, a flow and, and just without any thought? Back on the chords, please, back on the chords. Here we go. We can have a step back if you're feeling strong. And you want to put a little extra effort through. Breathing two to the right, two to the left. We've mentioned this before when you're breathing. Remember, as you turn into it, you must keep that pivot. You don't want to lean on a straight arm, helping prop you up for air. Pivot the elbow, regardless of whether the head is turning for air or not. If you can fix that, you will really stand out in the world of triathlon where someone's haven't had the good fortune to grow up in a club environment. I did a, a workshop and only two out of about 41, 42 swimmers, two swimmers could actually create this catch position when they breathe. 38, 39 of them or so were just leaning on that straight arm to stabilize their breath. So that stress on the shoulder, not ideal. It's bouncing you up. And if you're breathing every second stroke, that's an awful lot of time wasted by being bounced up when you could have been sending yourself forwards. Okay, about halfway through this block. Think about what that drill is doing, the switching, the rotation, the pivot regardless, whether the head's moving or not. All of that coming in and making your front crawl, delivering a better product. Last 45 seconds. On that little mantra through, just to stay focused. Am I narrow? Could I be smaller? Could I hide more from the water? Are the toes behind the feet? Are the feet behind the legs? Are the legs behind the body? That's the important one. Obviously, the feet flutter up and down, but can you keep the legs small enough? that you don't splay out and upset things. Is the body sort of traveling at its smallest, narrowest possible position? In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Good work, everyone. Back onto the dumbbells. Okay, here we go. One minute with the right arm, one minute with the left arm. Remember, we want to be swimming narrow. So that's narrow on the recovery, narrow on the submerged. That refers to the trajectory of the arm, the way it recovers and the way it pulls. We don't want to be recovering low and wide because we haven't rotated. We don't want to be sweeping wide because we're still sort of stuck in 1978 and we're S pulling wide and so on. Okay, we want to be narrow under the body. And whether it's a straight arm recovery over the top, you still want to be narrow. You still want to swim within that narrow channel. Low and wide is what's then going to sort of need a leg to splay out to stabilize that. So we avoid that at all costs. Last couple. Excellent. And Swap sides, please, swap sides. Head nice and still. Keep it still. If the arm is in motion, the head is in still. We know the arms stop moving, but we get the breath to the side. Shoulder comes through, recovers back up above the surface. Pull it through, back up above the surface. Last 30 seconds. Imagine the legs are working pretty hard to stabilize all of this, to drive the drill. You need your legs just to help shift the body, rotate it. We're not trying to create propulsion from the kick for long distance front crawl, but we do need a little bit to help the balance, help move the hips. And if you're not sure how much, carry on. I'm just gonna show you this. But this torpedo drill with the front crawl leg kick, work on lifting the shoulders from side to side via the legs. Just push off and try this. And if you can learn to lift the shoulders back onto the cords, if you can learn to lift the shoulders out of leg kick, 
you will not need that straight arm push down because you have learned to move the shoulder out of the way with the legs, with the hips, driving the body position, and you'll get that breath. You won't need to create your rotation out of that push down. You win all around. Safer for the shoulders, better forward propulsion, everything wins. Okay, two minutes, two minutes. We're nearly done, swimmers, we're nearly done. Just a couple more blocks. Your choice if you want to add some breathing in. Focus on the arms. Focus on the tension. The triceps starting to fatigue. Are you shortening the stroke? Maybe take a step up if you need to. Take a step forwards just so you can finish. Put a little pivot in at the back of the stroke. See the palm pushes water through a lot, little bit longer, as far back as you can go. Fingertips to elbows at the front, and then a little pivot from the wrist at the back. We never want the palm pushing down. That's just going to bounce us up. Equally, we don't want the palm facing up too early. That's going to sink the hips. Okay, last 15 seconds. Three, two, one, back on the dumbbells. Okay, nice and slow. Let's go through this extra slow, extra slow. Three, two, one on the recovery. Three, two, one on the pull. Three, two, one on the recovery. Three, two, one on the pull. Shoulder must start high, finish low, and return to its high position. Nice and slow. Really feel the brain absorbing this drill, shaping the trajectory of the arms above and below the surface. Feel it flowing into the full stroke. Remember, we're pulling with the palm and the forearm at this early stage. Nice and slow. Other arm, please, other arm. Three, two, one, under the water. Three, two, one, above the surface. Three, two, one, as we pull through under the body, rotate. Three, two, one, back up above the surface. Two, on the pull under. Three, two, one. Remember, we're trying to stay narrow. Keep the hand pulling under the body. Recover, 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 keep it narrow. You can still do this drill with a straight arm above the surface. Still, but the harder thing is to get the catch position from that straight arm leaning down. Still want to catch and get your rotation. Last few seconds, let's try for one more. Good, 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 back on the cords. Last minute, and then we've got our two singles. We're nearly there, we're nearly there. Keep the hands at 180 to each other. Don't let it become a catch up, whether that's at the front of the stroke or sort of from the hips. Don't want sort of the stroke originating out of the back. Everything is forwards. Keep them at 180, pivot, drive the water back towards the feet with a nice central pathway under the body. Last 10, nine, eight, seven, three, two, good work. Onto the cords, please, onto the cords. Now, if you're curious, on dry land, this is quite a good demonstration. If you're curious why, 
we've switched from using single arm drill performed with a, an arm in the pocket. So this is sort of the modern version. You can easily see how that shoulder, we've been talking about it, the shoulder starts high, finishes low, returns high. Obviously that's how we swim our full stroke, switching from side to side. If I leave the unused arm out in front, I get a little bit of rotation on the pull, but I finish flat. A little bit of rotation, and I finish flat. You can see how this body alignment, I don't get that full range that I would with the full stroke. That is why that drill has been progressed. And if you're still doing single arm, I mean, there's a place at a time and a place for it early on in your development. It's, it's useful to sort of to practice working the catch and so on. It's, it'll challenge you to breathe to your less favored side. There is a time and a place early on, but if you've mastered those areas, then really you should be doing this drill with the unused arm in the pocket. Swap sides, last minute and we're done. Good work everyone, last 35 seconds. Stay narrow, pull with the forearm, make that coupling, you know, what I, what I mean by that is sort of have the body work as one. So if this anchors well, it should be a little bit easier to sort of hold the water here and really finish driving the rotation. That's what we mean by sort of a coupling effect. That's when the legs, the hips, the arms all work together and swimming becomes an awful lot easier. No one particular area is working excessively hard. All the areas are contributing a little mass, small amount. No muscle group is working excessively and it should all become a lot easier and flow. Good work, everyone, good. As always, let's just wrap it up with a little bit of backstroke to unwind nearly 40 minutes of front crawl. Don't worry about dumbbells for this. We're just stretching out, relaxing. Notice how similar the body positions are. Shoulders switching from side to side. Head nice and still. If you've got 10 minutes to yourself this afternoon, have a look at Camille Lacour. French backstroker from the last 10 years, absolutely beautiful stroke. If you're not inspired to learn it, give it a go. Having watched that, then I don't know what to offer you, but uh, it's quite amazing. 